Um, I spent most of the day today making wrap-ups for my clients and otherwise didn't do much. I went out to vote, first time voting. Um, and other than that, I spent a lot of time reflecting on stuff. I find reflecting very challenging sometimes. Basically, like reflecting in terms of my overall strategy, direction, like where I'm going, what I'm doing, the things I'm working on, in terms of the agency, in terms of like where I'm positioning myself. And frankly, it's it's a really hard. It's hard because I, I've like when my friends, I, I tend to compare it to like you're basically trying to navigate. In the dark without a compass and you know maybe maybe you know maybe you start to get a compass as you, or like you have a compass of your own ideas but you don't know how well calibrated that compass is and now with the internet the good thing is we've started getting maps because other people have done it so you start to get this map right and you see how this guy did it but then that guy's also got his own map and it's slightly different because he did it in a different way and so you got another one and then you have thousands and thousands and thousands of maps but you can't possibly read all of them and you can't possibly do all of them because they all lead, lead to slightly different destinations. I mean, they all lead to land one way or another, right? They'll quote unquote, make it kind of thing. But it's um, incredibly challenging when you, you don't know how well calibrated your compass is, right? So you don't know how well you're making the decisions. You don't always, you, you don't immediately have, uh, this, this is one of the things that I was reflecting on, but I, I think I want to build more community because I don't think I have enough of that right now. Like I, I don't have a circle of people who are like, I've got a lot of friends who do really interesting things, but I, I think for a large part, maybe aren't as close or I don't get enough exposure. Like, I just want to spend more time with interesting people who do the things that I want to do. And I don't think I do that enough at the, at the moment. And so I, I think I want to work on that, like doing more things in person and stuff like that. Um, but also you don't want to be spending time with people who don't have what you want because or like you can spend time with them but just don't ask them for advice because that's effectively the blind leading the blind and that's one of the most common mistakes is that you know you start working on something and you go ask your like next door neighbor your friend or your best friend what do you think of this idea whatever the the, the thing is the advice is often more often than not from a really genuine place like they want you to to win they want to help whatever but sometimes they just don't know because they haven't done it. And so their advice might be right, but their advice might also be wrong. And there's actually, there's there's no good reason to believe because, you know, it's the blind leading the blind. You don't have a reason to listen to what they say over other people, right? It's Joe Schmo. Um, and so I don't want that as well, but yeah. And I was just considering like, I want to build something meaningful. And in terms of like, I want to build useful things for humanity just in general as, as like a, an overarching north star like i want to build useful genuinely useful things and as i've i've mentioned before but i think the agency this this agency is very much a means to an end in terms of it is a learning vehicle it is a vehicle where i get to practice the art of company building right of business building i also get to practice development which i think is a really core skill of just like building good products and i get to iterate on that and i think with each product that we've worked on we've done a better and better job and i want to keep making it that way so i'm learning to build better quality things practicing the skill of building faster whatever practicing all the the, the fundamental business skills and uh, from things like management recruiting culture and one, one of the things which i think is a good challenge that a development agency is forcing me to have is to scale things, you need a quality team. Like you cannot be the smartest person on your team. And it's not some like, it's not some, th you know, it's not like 12 automations that you can set up on Zapier and happy days for all your clients. Like that, no, like you, you, you need people who know more than you do and you need to figure out how to manage technically challenging tasks and, you know, stakeholder management, stuff like this, which is, I think really, they're really useful skills to learn, but then there's this other side of me nagging, which is like, okay, well, when's the time to switch out? When's the time, when, when do you call it a day and say that you've learned the lessons to work on something next? And actually, I found myself looking at some videos of Steve Jobs. I think Steve Jobs is a big reference in, in this kind of stuff because I think he he had a, a lot of focus, which I think is one of the most, is it one of the hardest things to master and, and to like really dominate? I think he did that really well. 
And it's something that I think a lot of people struggle with and, and especially with the internet is because it's incredibly overstimulating with the possibilities that you have. And so, you know, at what point do I kind of switch my focus or whatever? What, what point have I learned enough lessons? I don't know. And, and at the moment, I think my criteria is like, if I find something very, that I, that I find to be very meaningful and like worthwhile, like, I think this fundamentally contributes to our future in a meaningful way, then I think I would switch. But until then, I, I want to make the most of this. And in many ways, like I want to, you know, take the agency to a bigger size first, because I think there are still more lessons to be learned. Um, but it's, it's, for me, it's, I'm finding it very hard to calibrate and gauge exactly when I should switch or, or shouldn't. But I think the conclusion that I've been tiptoeing around is that I think, I think to some degree it'll be intuitive and that like, I should just, I should fiddle with more things. I should spend time more, I should spend more time tinkering, trying things, experimenting and just be open, but also not, I think one, one of the worst things you can, no, no, maybe not worst things, but like when I ask people, if, if somebody's starting an idea or whatever, and I ask them, it's like, well, why do you want to build this? Or why do you want to start a company? And they're just like, oh, because I want to, I want to make a company. I want that experience. I don't know, but I think it's not the best starting point because you will tend to try and you, you will kind of inorganically force ideas out of you. Like you will try and solve problems that don't exist for the sake of creating a company, just for the sake of making business. And I think if, if, if your whole thing is you just want to make a business, like do something that's, that's being tried and tested. So you eliminate the execute, the idea risk and you just have execution risk because, you know, you, you don't want to kind of go half-assed on something and be like, well, I kind of want to start a company, but I want to make it innovative. I don't know what I want, totally want to do, but I'm just going to try this thing. And, you know, when the challenges come and they will come, and if you're doing something new, they will come harder and faster, I think. Um, it will be so much harder to stick by your company if you don't, if you're not hundred percent, like, you know, believing in it. And like, I've seen, I think I've, I've been looking up to my clients in terms of like the founders of the, my clients as companies and, and looking at how did they think about these things? How did they approach whatever problem they're solving? And I think some of them, I mean, I think all of them are working on meaningful problems and that builds a really exciting culture. And so I, I also want that at some point. Um, no, I don't, I just don't know when that comes or where that comes from. And I also don't want to jump ship too early. Like I don't want to, I don't want to leave huge lessons on the table. And I, th I still think I, I could, I think taking the agency to seven figures first might be a good start because I don't think it's that unreachable or indomitable. Like most agencies cap out around a million, like most service-based agencies will, will usually, you know, turn, turn up and turn, have a turn, turn out, turn, I don't know what I'm thinking of, but they, most agencies will usually cap out it in the low million. So, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll have in terms of revenue, maybe one, two, three million, kind of one to five million, you know. And then you have those behemoth agencies that have been running for years and decades. And those are, you know, those are the ones that are getting in the 200 million, 300 million. But you don't see, you, you, you don't see agencies worth billions or, you know, that have billions in revenue. That is, I think, I doesn't, I don't think exists. Might be, might be wrong. But from what I've seen, the largest agencies in the world in marketing and development, whatever they bring in, you know, the, in the two to $300 million range, um, and I, you know, that's the work of decades. And I think my ideal situation is I want to be able to get the, to the point where the agency can be run by itself. And I think that will also give me a really good opportunity to face this challenge of how do you hand something off successfully? Because as a founder, you must retain control over a lot of things. And, and you are such a, like, you are the business plan at the start. And over time that changes, but to, to completely step back, I think, I think is, I think it's a challenge for any company founder. Like it's a process that takes time. Ray Dalio wrote about it in his book Principles, like how he took a step back from um, from oh the name the name eludes me it escapes me. Uh, bu, 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 uh, Bridgewater, Bridgewater, that's it. Um, like when Ray Dalio was leaving, he had a lot of he had some turmoil basically, right? Because there are certain ways that he did things that other people didn't immediately capture. And I think that's one of the hardest things to do. And so I think 
I don't think I should leave the agency without fundamentally learning that lesson. I think previously, you know, like I kind of have this revenue number in mind because, you know, it feels like a milestone. And I think maybe it's a good guide in terms of like, that's a goal. But I think more fundamentally, the biggest milestone to work on the next thing is to have it be able to run by itself without my oversight or management. And that I have a long way to work toward. And I think it's a challenging, a challenging prospect, but also a worthwhile one. Um, Sam Owens, Owens, Sam, I don't know, uh, that guy who built school and consulting.com, um, he was doing an agency in school at the same time for a while. So, you know, if I find something or if I find a kind of mission that I really believe in, then I can concurrently do things with the agency, but I, I still want to work toward being able to get the, like, I want to be able to get the agency off my hands and not shut it down. Um, I want to genuinely build a business, not something that, not basically build a, something that, that brings me in cash, but effectively only runs with me in it. Right. Because that, I don't think that's a business. That's just, a, that's a glorified job with a bunch of helpers because at the end of the day, you still, you still need to be there. And if you still need to be there, that that's not, you know, but this is why building a business takes a long time. And what was I going to say? Oh yeah. I think as far as like also just another consideration of mine, but I, I think I'm, I'm looking a lot at like, despite the fact that, okay, I'm still focused on the agency, still focused on all these things. I'm focused on three main spaces in general as just like strategic. Like, I think these are, these are the places that I, think will bring a lot of value in terms of over the next 10, 20, 30, 50 years. It's AI, blockchain, and the creator economy. I like, I think that that's where a lot of innovation will happen. And, and it's the next wave of like big opportunities, the same way that like the internet created a lot of opportunities, you know, um, Apple and Microsoft were built on the advent of the personal computer, which was like, you know, that, that was their big thing that was kind of like in the future, this will be huge. Um, but also I think it's important to balance that school of thought of like, what's going to change and what's, what's going to grow over the next 50 years. Also keep in mind what's not going to change. Uh, Jeff Bezos is the one who points this out. And I think he, I don't know, in some interview, but like basically people all the time, they ask him, Oh, what, you know, what are the trends? What are the trends? What are the, the, the things that are going to change over the next 10 years? And he's, he says, and I think with good reason, that not enough people ask him what's not going to change over the next 10 years. Because customers are still going to, like in, you know, in his case, in his example, customers are still going to want low prices. They're still going to want faster and faster delivery times. And they're still going to want more choice or whatever. Like those are fundamental truths that you can rely on. And if your business, if your business focuses on those it will always, you will always have a business as long as you're, you're doing more of those things. You know, nobody's ever going to say in 10 years, actually, please don't deliver my package to me tomorrow. I want it in 10 days. Like nobody's going to say that. Right. And it's important to keep those things in mind. What's not going to change as well. Um, and so you have to balance these, like this dichotomy of, okay, what is going to change, but also keep in mind what's not. Um, I think financial systems might undergo a lot of innovation with web three. And so like my agency is like has, has a strong foothold in web three, if you will, like we've worked with a lot of web three clients and it was originally the niche that I, I started in. And um, I might focus more on that, double down on that. And I think just in general, I want to spend more time tinkering with, like, I think one of the first steps is I have to be more in touch with things in terms of the communities. What's, what are the biggest companies? What are the products being built? Like what are the, what's happening basically? my and i have to keep that ear to the ground while also building and i have been doubling down on yeah i mean that's that's just a big goal it's like okay big reflection is spend more time in, in the community integrate more on that stuff and i you know i'm already part of it but i think for a while it was it, it's hard to balance because you know i also focus on my agency and focus on fulfillment and that takes a lot of time out of it out of things um but yeah, so first step to also get my agency kind of off my own plate is I need I need a good team. I need enough of a run rate that I can sleep easy at night knowing my my costs are covered for all of my team and my team can do an amazing job and 
I'm in the midst of hiring another, I want another senior developer who's really good. Like I want to make the best team in the world, uh, no less. And that, you know, that does take time. Um, but that that's kind of step one of building any kind of business, especially service-based, but you can't, you can't be, fulfillment cannot rely on your shoulders. Otherwise you will never be able to step back. And then there's management and then, and then getting sales off your shoulders is a whole nother thing because I mean, people buy trust. And so what the relationships you build are, are often going to be a very, very key part of it. So like, I think that's all, these are all fundamental things, which I like bridges that I have not totally crossed. I think the fulfillment ones, the one that I've partially crossed. Um, but you know, you have to build more systems and then also find people. I, I think Charlie Munger and, and Warren Buffett put it in a really nice way. You want wonderful businesses. Wonderful businesses are businesses that can be run by idiots or something along those lines. Basically it's like you, you want, oh yeah, yeah, you want a business that can be run by idiots, run by wonderful people. Cause that's how you make a cash cow, right? Because if, if it's, if it's so simple that somebody stupid could run it, then you know that it stays alive. And if you put a wonderful person in it, you know that it grows. Um, yeah, I think that thinking is, is good. Um, in terms of like actionable steps right now, I, I don't think there's like loads of stuff. I think it's just, um, in terms of like, I want to tinker more, build more little little tools and little things. So I want to set aside time in the agency. I also want to, I think just be hiring on an ongoing basis to find the best talent and finding good talent takes a really long time. I can't tell you how many interviews I've been through for this front end role. And some people are useless. Some people don't show up. Some people, you know, they, they lie about what they can and can't do. Um, and it's very challenging. So building, building a like good, people is, is, takes time um yeah what, what else i think that's it like just actionable stuff right right now is i have to keep i think i want to run kind of open like i want to run continuous interviews so that i'm always on the lookout for good amazing talent the idea is not to build a team of like 50 people because like, I don't think I need that for, for the, the thing that I'm trying to build, which is like an agency that reaches seven figures and that I can get hands off. And, but also I, I don't want to hand it off and then just, you know, expect it to run. Like a business is growing or dying. It, it, it Very rarely will a business just like plateau and stay the same for years. It is growing or dying. And so then I need to find somebody who also wants to pick up from where I am, I'm, I'm at. But the first thing is I want an incredible team and... I've started that. I've started building a foundation for that, which I'm really excited about. And I think a year ago, I wasn't doing enough of that. But yeah, I think that's probably the most significant step right now I can take toward that. And obviously, I want to build that as quickly as possible. I think that comes with the natural impatience of being 19. It's just like, <laughs> I want things now, I want things fast, all, all of the above. But The, you know, I, I do recognize the, uh, that it does take years and whatever, and I'm trying as much as possible to, to listen to the overstimulation that comes from the internet. A lot of the time it's, it's hard because you have to try to find line because if you're separated from the internet, you're, you're also going to be useless, right? Because that, that's where everything is happening and you have to be there. But also if you listen too much, um, you, you will, you will get caught up in the FOMO in the get rich quick stuff. Like it, it's just, it's a fine it's a fine line to, to tread. Um, it's a tight rope to walk. And like a lot of things are, to be fair. I think that's been a leading principle just in general. Like the best the best decisions I've come from and the, the most success I've ever had is, is just like from understanding that most things are dichotomies you need to manage when, and, and like you need to have balance in your thinking. If you do not have balance, I don't know. That's just the biggest thing I'd recommend to anybody. It's like trying to have balance in your thinking. Never go with just one opinion or just one school of thought. But yeah, I guess that, that was a lot of reflection for today. I wanted to record something earlier. I didn't. It is what it is. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and finish. Uh, there's this one wrap up I need to do. Usually I wouldn't leave it to like this late on Sunday, but it is, it is what it is. Um, so I'm going to go do that and then want to remake the website, make more case studies, document more of what I'm doing, and then work toward the April goal. Like I really want to push for that. I think that, that yeah, if I really push for that April goal, that milestone, it will, it will get me really 
on track for what I want to do. And if I unblock the results side of things in terms of like just the revenue run rate, things like that, and I can start, the sooner I can start working on the kind of handoff side of things, which will take time. Yeah, I think, I think the better. Um, but like at the same time, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm both very impatient and want to work things, want to work, want to work toward things quickly. Like I'm, I'm, I'm aggressive. I'm hungry. Like I'm, I'm, I'm I'm balancing that with also just like, I'm okay with the fact that it will take time and I'm not going to make as much as I can. Obviously like I'm, I, I don't want to make stupid decisions in the name of that because that is such a big downfall that I've fallen into many times before. So, um, yeah. So that's the plan at the moment. I'm going to head back to work and, uh, yeah, there's a video to publish as well. So I'm, I'm going to do that. And, uh, Hopefully sleep. Oh, it's already twelve fifteen. Maybe if I can sleep by one thirty, that'd be great. That's the that's the that's the goal. I don't want I don't want to totally fuck my sleep schedule this week if possible. But yeah, that'll be Sunday, March ten. That's a that's a wrap.